nana here and then in this one uh, we are going to see a sales order import <clears throat> and then uh, we have some issues and then we'll be discussing about it and then we have one uh, technical expert also available to help us out on that issue so let us now go there and then see how to import a sales order so the first activity is what go there and i have made one uh, sales order import directory in this now fine there is the import and then there is already been uploaded also fine into our google drive fine open it up so sales order import is now uploaded <coughs> <coughs> open up the import details and then first of all obtain all the details <coughs> double click on it so we had to obtain all the details fine there is the first time before you import whatever you are doing now so we are going to first of all find out your legal entity and business unit and remember uh, we are now using our rapid implementation and so the names will be slightly different actually so let us now first of all find out the names so let us now go to the place let us now go to the fsm area and go to the sarapan maintenance and then go to the fsm area <clears throat> and then i will now bring it to the financials okay i will now go to assign busy busy assign busy busy <clears throat> so i have already chosen the scope as 1t1 now right? 1t1 is my scope fine click on the assign business unit business function so go to this place you first of all choose the scope and then go inside otherwise if you click on it also it will ask for the scope now fine right? put the scope and then go inside <clears throat> so when you go it you will now find the business unit name is what 1t1 us business units it's fine that is the way you have written it on your uh, uh, excel sheet for rapid implementation so that you copy it and then get it now. the legal entity is this now so you 1t1 uh, space us space legal facility fine that is also copied over here so these two informations are now obtained now i have created one more customer for this exercise fine i will now put this as what two now fine i am going to make a change to that so i will now give a save and then i will now find out the payment terms from the sales order now fine give a cancel now fine now i can give this uh, payment terms so this now fine so i will now go to the favorites and then i have already given the manage manage orders now fine click on the manage orders let me create a sales order for this customer and then identify it. I click on create order. I'm going to create it now. Drop it down. And then choose this. And then I will now say one T one. I will now choose the second customer. Now. Cust two. I will now do it. So the cust two now. Fine. Cust two. I'm putting it up. Fine. That now. So everything is coming. So I'm going to create a, uh, this thing on this one. Go down. And then go to the third tab region. You will now find the payment terms coming up for you. Now. Fine. So the payment terms is what. I will not see net thirty. Fine. You can even choose one of them. Now. Fine. So net thirty is the one. Fine. Whatever you want, you can do it. Now. Fine. So I'm not choosing net thirty. Now. So net thirty net rather is a thirty net actually. So thirty net. Fine. So thirty net. So you whichever you want to import fine accordingly you do it. Now fine. I have not taken this example thirty net. Then at first in the inventory area we have to find out these three informations before you go ahead. Now. So give a cancel now fine. We will now go to this place. <clears throat> you will now go and then have a look at it now fine. So uh, you will now go to this place. We will now go to the items now fine. So manage item, create item as a, as a navigation fine go there. So I will now have saved it as a favorite. Always the frequently used ones you save it as a favorite actually, so that it will be easy for you to navigate actually. Fine, quickly you can navigate now. So I have added a favorite. You go to the favorite and then add to favorites. Now. So that way you can do it. Now add to favorites, you can do it, and then they will all be coming over here now. So so click on it. So it's one. I clicked on it. It's not coming. Okay. So here you go there. Go to the browse items. Fine. Go to the browse items, and then let me query the item. <clears throat> let me take up a different item. Now fine. Order with that. So not the the standard order. Let me take up a different item. <clears throat> One T one, and then click on search. No fine. Okay, and you must have a stock also for that. No fine. That is a very important one. And if you don't have a stock, it will be finding difficulty actually. Fine. So, uh, 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 let us say serial inventory pick. <clears throat> Whether we have sufficient quantities or not, I am not very sure about it now. Okay, I will now choose my standard order itself because I have a. So see to it that you have a stock on this. No fine. Otherwise, what happens? It will be giving a problem now. So my standard order has got sufficient quantities, and so I am not going to use this. No fine. So go there underscore std. Fine, go there query. My standard order item is having sufficient quantities. You must have a quantity. Fine, go there because I am not going to submit it for uh, what happens. Going ahead of this, no fine, go there. So we have a standard order. Fine, go there. Tomorrow. And choose an item which has got sufficient quantities, and then you should have what happens. Uh, done a uh, collection and refresh also. So go there and then uh, put the item over here. Fine, go there. Item is now put over here. Fine. And then if you go to the associations, you can now find the R over here now. You go to the associations and then you now find one T one one is the one fine. So one capital T one one, and then afterwards the products units of materials will be available. And I'm going to go to the overview. <clears throat> go there, click on it. So the products units of materials are available. 
So we have collected this information. Fine. One from the sales orders, we have collected this information. And then through the assigned business unit business function, we have found out this information. And then through the uh, browse items, uh, we have found out this information. Now we are going to go for the toughest part of it. There's a place where my schools are struggling like anything now. Fine. So we have to identify the party site ID as well as this one. These two things has to be identified. Fine. If this has been done for every customer, remember. It has been done for every customer. And then uh, my students are struggling because not for one, but for let us say 3,000 sales orders, they want to import now. Fine. So for which I don't have any query. We have one expert available here now. Fine. So he, if he frames a query and then give it to us, it will be excellent actually. Fine. The end client will be having an Excel sheet. Fine. The legacy system will be having an Excel sheet listing all the customers actually. Fine. Let us say he's having around 400 customers in the legacy system or 8,000 customers. So you will have a list of customers. For each and every customer, we had to identify this now. Fine, Gulam, here I want your help now. Fine. Otherwise, what happens is they have to run the, I got a query from one of my students and then he's saying I'm using it and then it is a laborious task to identify these two things for every customer actually. So if you can write a query for what happens, a list of customers, let us say if you have in an Excel sheet around, let us say 600 customers, fine. If you can write a query, in which what happens, I can now extract in one go all these things. Gulam, are you there? <clears throat> are you able to understand this is not a requirement? Gulam. <clears throat> so this is what I need it actually. I need it. So I will now do it only for one customer. And then if you can do it for multiple customers, if you can write a query, it will be great. Fine. This is given again by my student actually. So he has given me the ship to and build to a scale query. So I'll now open up this, this one. I'm now opening it up. So let me open it up. He has given this query now. Fine. So, so many fields, he is now going to give it to me. Fine. Goes Out of which there are two fields which are important for sales order import. One is what? Party site ID for ship to. And then site use ID for build to. Gulam, are you there? Fine. I want his interaction actually. Fine. He is busy, I think. Fine. Probably he's not there. So I, I, I hope he's not able to. Sir, I'm... <clears throat> oh, God. Uh, Gulam is out and then he'll be coming back after five minutes. Fine. I'll again uh, talk to him on this moment. So go there. So uh, these two informations are uh, required actually. These are the only two informations which are required for every customer actually. So he has given this. So he has given it for what happens uh, the first customer actually. Fine. What happens? You're going to make a change on this moment. So one to one cust. I will not make a change to two now. Fine. Because oh, uh, I've already created the second customer. Fine. I will not change it to two. Now. <coughs> and what else? I will not save it also. So I will not take a copy of it. So take a copy of it. So in this place only you have to change the customer actually. But if you can write a query in which what happens, it will not pick up from Excel sheet. Fine. If you have a web service or something like that, it will be great actually. And writing it for each and every customer is a very laborious job. When you have thousands of customers, it's very difficult. Take a copy of the query. Now. now we are going to identify for the second customer, we are going to identify. Now, this many fields are coming. Fine. Click on it. So having taken a copy of it, we go there. Click on it. I will not go to what? I will not go to the home. And then I will not go to the tools now. <clears throat> I'm using the same item because it has got a stock, so that's why I'm using the same item. I'm not going to go to the tools. <clears throat> so go to the tools. <clears throat> and then here I go to the what's called. You go to the reports and analytics. Hey Sandeep, whenever a Gulam comes in, uh, please inform me now. Okay, Sandeep, are you there? So go to the reports and analytics in the tools. Sandeep, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Fine. Whenever you find Gulam is available, fine, please immediately. He might have, he will be putting a message there in the chat. Fine. We want to discuss on this. Gulam is an expert and technical. He is now leading. He is leading a team actually, fine, but he is very busy. Uh, I somehow or other identified him. Then I uh, let us know, see whether he can uh, help us out of us. You go to the report and analytics. In this place, you click on the browse catalog on the right hand side top. You click on the browse catalog on the right hand side top. <clears throat> we are going inside now. So click on new now. Fine. Click on the new. Ah, and then click on the data model. So click on the new and then click on the data model. So click on the new and then click on the data model. So here you drop down this plus now. Fine, you'll be finding one SQL query. Fine, more that click on it. And then let us now write our SQL query over here. You now paste the query over here. It is for cast two actually. So I will now say test two. I will not drop down and then I was asked to make it as the FSCM now. FSCM, you're going to make it. And there's a standard SQL query only. You give a name and then make it as FSCM and then click on OK. It will not run the query. Now. Click on OK. It will not start to run the query. The query has run. It has not given the results. Now, now you're going to see the results. Fine. Go to the data. Fine. Here, what happens? You go there. You make it as a table view, table view. Now, fine. Data, click on view and then make a table view. Now, fine. And do not view the tree view. Tree view, the first two one is basically for the ship to the G1. And then in the bottom, what happens? You'll be getting a ship built to now. Fine. So there will be two such informations will be available. So do not use this now, actually. You go to the table view. You go to the table view. 
So he got faster. The first one is a ship too long. So go further, further in this place. Whatever you know, find it. So it is called party site ID for ship too long. Fine. You take a copy of it. You take a copy of it. And then put it on your Excel sheet. Go so there. I will not put it on this Excel sheet. So it is not coming as this thing. Fine. Right click and then whatever. I will not. Both of them, I will not. Right click and then format it. Format cells. I will not go to the number and then I will not make it as a number. I will not zero digits now. Take on it. So it will be a number. <clears throat> I will not make what happens. All these things is what left aligned actually. If I go to the home and then make it as a left aligned. Left aligned. So the party site ID is now done. Fine, give us say. Next is what? Site use the build tool and loss. Go to this place now. So party site ID for ship tool. And then if you go further, you will now find site use ID for build tool. So you will take it from the second line actually. The first line for ship tool and then this is the second line for this. You take a copy of it. So take a copy of it and then put on this place. Paste it over here. Fine. Again, how come it is becoming here? Fine. When I paste it, it is automatically becoming here. Fine. What are the format cells? Number of alignment. Ah, uh, no numbers. I'll not make it as a number. No. I think there it is a zero. Fine. Take one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Back, huh? back. When you're pasting it, I think it is automatically becoming as what different characters. <coughs> and remember, I have done it for one customer. If I have to do for thousand customers, fine. It becomes a very difficult one. And then you have to even frame an Excel sheet about all the customer name and then the party side ID and then this thing. Fine. And the left hand side, all the customers' name and the top, what happens, the party side ID and then ship to ID. So you have to make a great chain and then do it. No, fine. So this is where people are finding it difficult. So getting it for thousand customers is somewhat a laborious job actually. And if Gulam can automate it to one query, that will be great actually. Fine. If one query can be made, fine. For uh, what happens, we will know pull all the customer's name from an Excel sheet of a legacy system of the customer actually. And then if you can do it, it will be great. Gulam, have you arrived? <clears throat> so if a query can be made, and then how to pull it up from this place, it will be, it will be Or otherwise, you can have to use Excel services, uh, what is called uh, web services, or otherwise a uh, postman or rest services by which whatever they can do it. My students yeah. are already struggling on this, no fine. They are unable to do it. Yeah. Yes, Gulam, sir. Yes, sir. I am back. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. Gulam, uh, yeah. we have not just done uh, for one customer, we have identified this now. <clears throat> okay. So we wrote a query, and then the party side is this now fine. We, had, we, had, we executed the query. I will again okay. show you the query now fine. We'll go to the diagram, and then okay. I'll go to the execute query. Fine. So this is the if oh God. It's not coming as a new one. I click on it. How to see it? Fine. Go ahead. How to see this query? I think on it and I edit it. Thank you. So, this is a query which has been given by my student. Okay. So, he just done this query. So, out of which, what happens? We need only these two fields, fine. Party site ID for ship to and then the site use ID for build to. Okay. And then uh, he has written this query for only one customer. I changed it to 21 cust2 and then we got it. Mine. So, good And then, uh, if you, what happens? We got this one. Fine. So, go to the data. And then go to the view, and then you go to the table view. We are able to see now, right? The table view you can see. So the first line is ship to. So on the on this one, what happens? We are not taking this now. So we are taking the party uh, site to ship to ID, and then in the second line, what happens? This one we are taking. So how to automate it for thousand customers? <clears throat> okay, can I see the Excel sheet, the template? Yeah, this one, no? right. this is the one. So he has written this query like this. One. No, not the query, the Excel. The yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the one. So here, uh, the remaining are all we got it easily. Fine. This okay. one data and then this data also we got it. Easily. So this they are finding it difficult. So, so the, has got some the le customers. legal entity, business unit, customer name, payment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have all, just, I, I, I already shown him about how to bring it in. Fine, you are not there. So how to bring these four informations as well as these three informations? I already demonstrated. Yeah, no, the rest of the information are same for all, or it is that or it may be for thousand customers, all of them are same actually. Mm -hmm. And customers may vary, fine. Every sales order will be customer vary, item will also vary, org will vary, units of measures may vary. Okay. So these are the variants, fine. So on every sales orders, the customers may be different, item may be different, the org assignment may be different, the units of measures may be different. Fine. There are four variants on this one, one, two, and okay. then three, five variants of that okay. okay. And everything will be varied. So, getting this also is a laborious task. Fine, if you can write a query for all the seven, actually, all this seven. Yeah, that we can do. But how the <laughs> second record has to come? See, I have okay, no. I, first sales order. First sales order for cost two. 
and then the payment terms is 30 net and then you will have these two ideas fine with that organization is 21 standard order that the second sales orders for cust 3 the payment terms is 2 bit and net 30 fine and then you'll be having different information the organization may be 112 so this may product may be 21 standard order 2 each it may be dozen so likewise all these things will vary for every sales order act no in this excel sheet uh, how the second uh, record has to suppose i have the second record okay, okay. okay second customer how second it has customer. to look these seven will vary on the second customer no what uh, are they record. Record. so let us say they have around 3000 records of that yeah so, let's say you have one more record yeah, how yeah. it has to you know when 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 the program has to read it has to be in the order so it I has to be in the order now, right? so yeah. this information will be available on his excel sheet actually okay so that you have to pick it up so the second one may be like this one. so second one will be like the second record will be like this on his excel sheet now, right i will not say just for understanding purpose i'm putting some variation okay so it will be like this okay so likewise there is a second record so all yeah. these things are available on his excel sheet actually okay. it may be in different different columns now fine so you have to identify those columns and then pick up those things got getting an idea na yeah yeah but you know we can but in other ones like ebs from ebs we can generate the excel file yeah, 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 exactly yeah but yeah. here you know we don't have access to the db so we cannot generate the files you know that's what they they, yeah, they raised the sr also to oracle Oracle mm -hmm. says no, there go. You have to manually do it. No, fine. <laughs> they are yeah. struggling. Otherwise, like... you have to go for OAC or web services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what uh, one of my girl told me. That mm -hmm. if you go to web services, it is possible. That is what uh, somebody or some yeah. friends is now suggesting. But uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, that one you need more, much more technical. You know, if you go to web services with PLS skill, it's a simple and easy. Whether you go via web services or whatever it is, fine. If you have a solution, please. Uh, uh, I will, me, yeah, I, I will uh, discuss with my team also if they okay. have found something. You know, the, uh, in I, fusion is the problem. If it is EBS, it's very easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the biggest yeah. problem in fusion. Yeah. They are already struggling. Some three, four people are already struggling, and then two of them are told very clearly, sir, I am got totally tired of doing it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's really finding it very. Difficult. But this data you have to you know, extract from uh, fusion. From the legacy from the. Customer's legacy Excel will be there. From there, you have to bring it in. That Excel sheet from where it is coming? Yeah. Uh, he will be giving you Excel sheet. Fine. Okay. Then Excel okay. sheet has got all these seven informations now. Fine. ATB okay. are different, different columns. Fine. Okay. And from the Excel sheet, it, it, it And put it in another sheet. Fine. I will not show you about where exactly you have to put it. Okay. We have to put it. So now we are obtaining the data. Data getting getting the data is really a very, very, very difficult thing. We are obtaining all the data. And then you have formulated your own Excel sheet. Now we are going to begin our import. So we are going to begin our import. So the first activity of import is what I know. I'll save it now. One second. So we are going to begin import. So the first activity of import. I'll now close this file. So that is the real tough part. This is the real tough part. And if you can solve it, it will be great. Fine. So many people are now struggling on this now. Fine. Doing manually. It's a laborious task. Even they raised the SR Oracle saying you only have to do it manually. Fine. They don't have any no, solution. Also, sir, uh, that is option. This export. What is that export? Yeah, yeah. Export means what? Uh, you can export to Excel here itself. Can you just? Oh yeah, it? you can export it Excel. Okay, fine. But uh, you have to have a proper query to export it. No, fine. You can export it very well. Okay, I know that. You can very well export it. No, so that is a way. Uh, I, I, I have for multiple no, custom, the customers now. No, you have to write a query. Ah, that is what I am saying. You have to write a query. Yeah, you have to write a query. You, you have to modify that query. Ah, yeah, you have to modify. Then, Exactly. Then once the once you get the exact data, then you can export Customize. to the Excel. You can generate the Excel file itself. Oh, if you can write a more query for thousand customers, it will be great actually. Yeah, actually, yeah. if you remove if you remove these customers, you know party name. Yeah, party. It, will, it will give everything. But if you want the if you want the um, all the data has to come as per the Excel. No. You know you have to modify the query. That's now right. you are taking only the two two one values. Customer, actually, one customer taking it and then. There there are seven, eight columns. So yeah, yeah. all these things you have to modify this query. If this Excel go to that uh, reports and analytics tab, you can even export it. You are saying, no? thank you. Okay. Yeah, from there you can export it. If you mod the export it, yeah, yeah, using the export. If you can, you can export. Yeah. So instead of only this party site ID and the site uh, build to ship oh. to to build to, you can write all the fields if it is available in the table, or you can dummy dummy the value. Is it's not exporting as an XML sheet now? Fine, it is not exporting not as an Excel sheet, but as XML now. 
uh, exporting it as XML, XML actually. Actually, there should be a way to export the Excel also. Okay. Just, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, you think over it and then if yeah, you... I, I will update you, sir. I will okay. update. You can even update in the group now. It is now exporting as XML only. So yeah. you can export yeah. it. Just a moment, just click that export. If you click on export, it is automatically downloading it. Yeah, just one second. Click on export, it goes, it started downloading the XML file. Excellent. Oh, from that XML, the data will come, you know, then you have, you have to yeah, yeah, yeah. save so, as a sample data from the XML, you can import to Excel. Okay, maybe, maybe. That's right. possible. So if you know a procedure for 1000 customers, let us say, fine. If okay, I will discuss, I will tell my team to prepare a script. Then, okay, yeah. Okay. If you can prepare a script either on a web services or something like that, my students in PwC as well as Deloitte are suffering like anything, right? They are down. Okay, so I will try my best. Say, say, my full time work is now this now. <laughs> yeah, that should be a way, you know. I, I will find out. Bringing legacy data into the system, she's struggling. Okay. Can you send me the sample Excel file, how you want the data, then I will work my no, team to work on that. You can make your own, fine. but if it is helpful, that will be great. Fine. Only thing is, we have to... No, what, are, what are all the data you need? I need only this much of a data. If you go there, I need only this much of a data. Okay. And this much. In the import details itself, I have got this details. Fine. It may vary from every sales order. Actually. This ship to and bill to, you have to take from the table based on the customer ID. Exactly. Based upon the customer idea, customer name is available. Uh, mm. I have the customer name available on the legacy actually. Uh, mm. And then, uh, based upon which, this all the summon information has to be, of course, obtained from the sales order. They have their a legacy system there. Okay. Think, think okay. over it. And if you have any solutions, you give it, and then I will now pass it on. And then okay. I will also ask them to interact with you. So, uh, it will be somewhat. So one okay. for the past three months, man, you're doing it for every implementation. The sales order report is a big headache. Yeah, yeah. You have to modify that query, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I feel it's possible. Yeah, okay. it's possible. if you can do it, there's a nice. Yeah. Now, okay. we are going to import the data. So first activity is what you go there, open it up. You go to docs. The remaining are all easy, fine. This is the only tough part. If you can solve this issue, it will be great. Experience. So docs.org.com, go there. Go to docs.org.com. Okay. Yeah. Sir, I'm leaving. Okay. okay, you can leave, you can leave. Okay, fine. thank you, Gulam, fine. So uh, if you can, if you have any solutions, this will, this record will be uploaded, so you can watch it and then you can know, have a look at it. If you can have a solution, to be great. Actually. And you can leave. The remaining are all just procedural, and so it doesn't need any big skills or anything. Like that. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay, you can leave. <clears throat> He's a very busy man, and so out of his busy schedule, he has come over here. So go to the docs.org home and then click on the Fusion Cloud applications in the left hand side. So go there, and then here on the supply chain, I'm going to go to the order management. So on the supply chain and manufacturing, go to the order management. Sandeep, you are there, now. Anybody else has come? Nobody else, no? Yes, sir, I'm here. Yeah. So you click on it, and then afterwards, you click on the all books on the left-hand side. So click on the all books on the left-hand side. And then here, the FBDA import is normally available under implementation, not on the getting started, not on the users, and go down. If you click on the all books on the left-hand side, go down, go down, go down. And then here, go down, go down. You'll be finding under implementation, you'll be finding in the implementation, what happens, you'll not find file-based data import is available. So click on the HTML hyperlink on this one, file based data report, you click on it. So here, inventory management, this many you can uh, uh, order, you can import it via FPDA, file based data import, maintenance, you can do this many, manufacturing, you can do this many, then order management, we are now going to go for that, what's called the import sales orders. So click on the link now. So you will now find one link which has got around, around 17 or 18 sheets available. So you can even, what happens, uh, populate more and more information. For example, if you want to put sales credits, you have to go to this, this uh, sheet, actually. Payment imports, lot serial import, fine, like that. What happens, uh, there are so many things you can do. It. So to begin with, what happens, everybody will not do only the first three sheets. <clears throat> fine. The balance sheets, you remove all the data. So if you click on it, what happens, it will not get downloaded. Fine. So sales order import a template will be having all the 17 sheets. You go there, click on it. It will not get downloaded. So I've already downloaded it and I have filled it also. I will not show my filled sheet now. So I already downloaded it and then filled it also. So open it up and go there. So the first activity, what you do is once when you open it up, <clears throat> go there. So if you can see, it, this is the, uh, go to the first most to see it now. The, the, the 17 or 18 sheets are there right now. Go there, go there, go there, go there. Go there. So go to the beginning. This first sheet you have to fill up. The second sheet you have to fill up. The third sheet you have to fill up. The remaining sheets, you go there and then delete all the contents. Because I'm not going to do it. And later on, you can do it. When transactions attribute interface, find the next one. It is a sales credit interface. And then the next one, if you go there, it will be something from payments interface. Likewise, whatever you will be there. Go there and then delete all the information. 
So now we will not start to fill up the first three sheets. So first is the order head. So let me have one order number. So I will be a transaction identifier. Let me make it as what? 200. 200. So go there. So I will not take a copy of it and then put it on the transaction source number also. And normally it is customary to keep both the things same actually. I will now open up a notepad. You can even deviate. Fine. Okay, you don't have to follow my own, my way of doing it. Fine. If you feel like you can deviate. Fine. I don't know. So the transaction identifier and then the source transaction number, I'm not keeping it the same. So after doing it, what happens? You take a copy of it and go there again, and then put it on the second and third sheets. It is a three one five four five two hundred. So go to the second sheet, and then here you change it. This and then go to the third sheet. It has got two lines now, fine. And the both the lines you make a change. Change it on both the lines. Fine. That is the first activity. Fine. So the second and third sheets, the source transaction identifier has to match with the first one. And remember, this is for every sales order. Every sales order for each and every sales order. So for a sales order number one, which you want to import, and you'll have one thing, and then you'll be copying that source identifier, and then every sales order will be having two lines on that third tab region. One is for the bill to, and then one is for the ship to, and then one for bill to. So each and every, so the third tab region for each and every sales order will have two entries. <clears throat> Whereas on the first and second, we'll have only one entry each. Got it, Sandeep, are you understanding it? <clears throat> so on the third sheet, you'll be having two entries for each and every sales order. So since we are importing only one sales order, we are doing it. So go there. And then the source is OPS now. Go there, go for that, go for that, go for that, go there. So the customer, I'm going to make a change now. This is the customer too now. The buying part is not changing. Friend. So out of all the things, all the yellow color field, which are having a double, double mark, what happens? One is a mandatory. This is a double star, double star, double star, double star. So we can even get the party name okay. And so we can give it. Then afterwards, the remaining, there, there is no mandatory columns. You can leave it as a no mandatory columns if you want to get away. And again, this is what by buying party identifier. So even though these two are coming as a mandatory, but this is for a specific reason. Right? <clears throat> so number of persons, uh, number of <coughs> person, company or organization that pays the order. <coughs> this is sometimes known as a sold to customer. So if you don't have a sold to customer, these two fields need not be entered, even though it says uh, both of them are double star. Only single star is mandatory. Double star means what out of these two, one of them are entered, provided if you have a different sold to customer. Otherwise, leave it blank. So nothing else is mandatory. I'm not, I'm not putting anything at all. And go there, go for that. And then here, whatever the transaction currency code is USD. You know that. And then you can even populate more and more field while you're working up. I will not say transaction date is what. So today is what. I will not say 26. Fine. I will not say transaction date is. I'm going to make a change to what 26. Now fine. That. So change it to 26. <clears throat> right. So I know change it to 16. Fine. That point. I will not give a save. As and when you keep on doing it. Fine. So he have a business unit to find that these two, one of the mandatory fine was that. So I will not go there and then have a look at it. So we have the business unit fine. Take a copy of it and then paste it on this page. There is no change at all. And the customer, there is a change. So I'm not putting it in that mode. And then I'm not giving these comments. I don't know how where to see these comments. Fine. That I'm unable to understand comments here. So requisitioning early here. We have it now. We have already taken a copy now. That will be it. <coughs> Uh, what are we getting? The freezing pricing is no fine. Uh, free shipping charges no fine. I have not given this, but this may not be required. Also, you can even try without that. Also, I am not freezing anything at all. <laughs> Submit the flag. So once when you submit it, it will be submitted, and then it will be going towards awaiting shipping for which whatever the item which you which you are choosing it must have sufficient stock, and then it should have been uh, collected and refreshed. Also, fine. that one you can choose it. So I am submitting the flag also. So this is fine. And the header header is on the computer. Fine. So you, whenever you make a change, you give a save. You know, go to the second tab. Go there. So again, source is something obvious. Fine. Go there. So source transaction line identifier is what this one. Fine. Line identifier one one. I'm now giving it a fine. Source transaction number. Fine. Go there. So I'm now giving a one one each. <clears throat> so you can even make a modification if you feel. Go there. So the product number is what I have okay. Taken a copy of this. No fine. Twenty one standard order is a part of the product. <clears throat> go for that, go for that. The ordered quantity, I will not say it is what eight, no, fine, eight is a quantity. <clears throat> go there. So, ordered units of matter is each capital is small. A, we already taken up. Yeah, I'm not putting it. So, uh, code and then the UM will be different. Fine. Put it on the UM, ordered UM. <clears throat> and then, now business unit, I already taken a copy from the placement of the point. And then, substitution is not allowed. And then, you can even make it as a blank also. So, the item of a nine quantity, how much is the quantity? You're going to find the line level, the item, and then for the quantity, eight quantities, ordered quantity. So eight quantities each. Go for that, go for that, go for that, <clears throat> go for that, go for that, for that customer product. 
there is all not required actually even the double double star the double double star means what only when the you read this one and then if it is required then only add to it go for that go for that go for that go for that one so go accounting all this is a big so leave it as a chain the big one of and payment terms is a must actually if you don't do it it will not get imported at all so the payment terms or so whatever you have taken up for it will be taken from the legacy actually yeah and then there are two types of one is a, one you can even create a sales order or return order also man is the order no you are not creating a sales order or a return order so go there go for that go for that go for that and then here the inventory or code if you are taking up right? so on the one so i am putting it over here go for that <clears throat> is a very big sheet the second sheet is a very big sheet so if you want to override your prices then you can give a price list fine you can even unit price list so we are now giving a 10 dollar price on the our price is already so i am going to use it only fine if you want to override you can do it fine you know selling price exam lama so when you are overriding it you can give all the three things in the way otherwise you leave it that it will not take up from the pricing list you can even experiment on all those things keep on experimenting so take on it man Like yeah, things are available here. Very big sheet actually. So much of information there. So you can even populate all those information on the second sheet. First sheet is not having so much. Here you got a lot of information to give a lot of value addition. Ten or fifteen customers, right? Tell me. I'm unable to understand what you're saying. Tell me again. Add ten uh, or fifteen lines also, right? With yeah, only for one sales order line. We are doing it for one sales order line. For every sales order line. What happens? Uh, long again, very fine. I already okay. Fine. This is not completed. So for every sales order line, you will be having one line here, and then in the second also. What happens if, if there are multiple lines on the sales order? You will be having multiple lines also, and then for each and every line, you will be having on the third one two lines. So fine, each and every line one ship to on the non. So if a sales order has got ten lines, fine. So you will be having ten lines on that. The same source identifier that refers to the same sales order. Correct. Okay. You got this one. Fine. This one will be saved on for all the ten lines. Actually, the source transaction identifier will be same for all the ten lines. Any doubts? Clear now? Yeah, clear. Go there. Check on it. So go to do order. Next is third one. Fine. Go there. So this is the toughest part where you found it. Fine. So I'm now pasting this to the already pasted this one. Fine. Right. For each and every sales order, uh, what happens? Every line will be having one ship to one ship. So OPS. Fine. Go there. I'm not giving this one. Fine. This is a ship to. Fine. The bill to. Go there. So here for the first three ones, uh, you have to populate only ship two now. So here, yeah, so party identifier, party name, or party name. This one I have populated. So on the second line, we will not populate anything because this is, this is not for bill two actually. So party identifier, party name, and party name in the first line is a ship two one. So we have populated the customer name. Go there. So this is not required here. Again, this is for bill two. Customer identifier, customer name, and the customer name. Fine. Out of three, one of them is a mandatory one. Double star. So only when it is a bill two. Fine. Second line is a bill two. So we are populating it. So first line we are populating it here in this place, and then the second line we are populating it. Now the toughest one is no going. Make the customer two, right, sir? It is a customer two, of course. We are not using customer two. Oh, sorry. I had to make a change. Fine. I forgot about it. Customer two. If I made a mistake. Good, good, good. You have identified me. Fine. The customer two. So let me make it change. Fine. Everywhere I am putting only customer two. No, fine. Otherwise it will throw an error. No? <laughs> okay. Anywhere else it is customer one. We will not go on and see on the first one. No, fine. We will not see whether anywhere. Oh God, it's a very difficult. One. It will be customer one. It will be very difficult. Uh, it has to be customer two. Second is a big, big one. If it is asked for the customer name, then I have to put as customer two actually. I'm not sure whether it is going to ask the customer name. On the line level, it will not ask actually. <clears throat> good subject, fine. Uh, good observation. <laughs> Correct me wherever I am wrong. Yeah. I don't find any other way. The customer details are coming up. Okay. Let us now see. Fine. So go to the third one now. Fine. I am not correcting it. As customer. <clears throat> so now we go for that. I give this. So we go there. So here, what happens? The party side identifier for the ship two actually. If you want to click on it, so party side ID for ship two. So this we have taken it from the query actually. Fine. We'll now take a copy of it and then paste it over here. Paste it over here. And then here, on the on the bill two, what happens? You take a copy of it. This is for the second customer. So both the things are pasted actually. That's it. So we have completed our activity of populating this Excel sheet actually. 
and everything is okay. Now, let us go there. Fine. Yeah, first three sheets only we have to concentrate. The remaining, we have to delete everything. I will not go to the instructions. I know. We will save. No, fine. At this stage, we will save. Because after import, do not save. Fine. Before import, you have to save. Remember, I go to the instruction, and then I am going to generate the CSV file. After generating the file, you should not save. Remember, so click on generate CSV file. So here, I will now keep it on. Uh, this thing, okay. Go there. Click on it. I will now open up my computer. Uh, go to the main. Open up this one. Fine. Go to the import. Now, when sales or import, I will now go there. Open it up. So here is the file. Uh, I have already imported one. I will now use import two. I'm using it. Click on save now. I'm keeping it in the same place. Now. So it is now getting imported. So the CSV file and then the zip files are created. Thank you. Okay. Now you close the file without saving it. Close it. So close it without saving it. And don't see. Because it will be creating unnecessary things. And then we have noted down the, the transaction source number, etc. Here over here. Now let us now bring it into the interface table. So we'll now go to this place. I will go there. Come on. I will not uh, go there. I will not go to the setup and then here I am not going to go to the home and then I will not go to the tools. I will not go to the tools. Now find that I will not go to the scheduled process. I will not bring it to the interface tables. First of all, you have to populate this CSV file onto the UCM area and then afterwards the interface tables. I am going to do it both together now. Right? Click on the schedule process. Bringing it to the UCM area as well as into the interface tables, I am going to do it in one go now. Right? It is a load interface right? load int. It's called load interface file by import. Fine, I'm going to run this ESS job. Click on it. So go there, click on it. I will not drop down the process now. Fine. The UCM area is known as import sales order is a UCM area. So I will now first of all bring the file into the UCM area and then afterwards I will now bring it to the interface tables. So both the things are done together on this load interface file by import. So once when you drop in, it will be taking some time actually. You have to wait for it now. You wait for it. So once when the thing is coming up. <clears throat> Let us hope that if Gulam gives a solution for this multiple data, no, fine. if it is solved, it will be excellent actually. Because the remaining are all procedural, fine. there is no such a skill required for this. So click on the search on this, no, fine. Well, click on search. We are going to make a search. No, so I will now say input sales. Input. This is a case sensitive one. If I give a small sales and then make a search, it will not come at all. Because it's case sensitive. Fine. Well, the capital A and then capital S make a search. So this is a UCM area. Fine. Choose the UCM area. It is called universal content management. I have not chosen it. And then drop down and then I will now upload my file into the UCM area. Drop it down. Upload a new file. I will now upload it. Click on choose file and then let me upload it. So import two is the one I'm going to upload it. So this CSV file will be uploaded into the import sales area UCM area. Now it is getting uploaded. Fine. Doing, doing, doing. It is done. So now the item has now our file has come into the user area. Now once when you submit it, it will be bringing to the it will be brought to the interface tables. So the once when you submit the concurrent. So first I brought the file into the UCM area of import sales orders. Now I am going to submit it. It will now bring it to the interface tables of order management. It will be brought to the interface tables. Some items are running. So we will refresh it and then see how it's like. So, seven eight is a concurrent. There are five concurrences will be running on. So, for every sheet, the load file interface, load file to interface will be running. So, since we have data only on three three sheets, only three sheets are coming. If you have data on all the seventeen sheets, seventeen such a load file to interface will be running. So, we have data only on the first three sheets. The remaining sheets, they based upon the need, you have to populate. All the file has got completed. One is the load, and then one is the transfer files. And then for each and every filled sheet, it will now run the load file interface. Clear on the Sunday? <coughs> yes, sir. Mm. All the file. Now we will now bring it to the base table. No? Click on the schedule process. We will now, it has already come into the interface table. Fine, that. It's again the same thing. Fine. Import, import sales. And then we Import sales is the one. Again, go there. And then choose the import sales order. This is the going to bring it to the interface table. The base. Okay. So click on OK. So here, <coughs> drop down <coughs> and then choose your this thing now. Fine. Order. Oracle. So Oracle Fusion Order Orchestration Planning. And then here, I will now put the source order number. Now. Fine. Go to that point. This is the one. I don't take it. Go to that point. 
based it over here upon the component. And then here, what happens? I make it as all statuses now. Fine. Interface status is got all, not error or anything like that. <coughs> all status is equal. <coughs> These three informations are uh, what happens sufficient now. Fine. Click on some. So even though it causes a source order number, but your order number will be coming from the uh, your, your document sequencing actually. Fine. Click on submit. So you're submitting it. So a seven eight seven concurrent is now running. That will actually happen. We won't have it. Seven eight seven concurrent. So it has got passed and then it has now spawned a child called import sales order sub process now. Fine. There is no going to run. So that will be importing it. So that import process is now running. So the import sales order has now got succeeded. We will not see whether any output is coming on this or not. Fine. We will not see any output is coming. Fine. It has now succeeded actually. I don't know how to put it back on the output. So import support is not succeeded. Fine. Correct. Click on the output of it. Not with that monitor. I don't know how to put it. Open up the log file. Take a copy of enter thing, and then I'll not put on a word file. And then see this file, and then blank document. And then you know. So this is the order number. Fine. The sold to customer. Everything is null. Now fine. So order management imported the source order. Okay, this is the order. Actually. Right. So even though we are given this as a source order number. So the real order number is nine seven four way based upon the document sequencing which you set up on the order management. We have to come to that okay? number of orders that were imported is one now. Fine, check the runtime for this. But uh, now put it also in this place now. Fine, go that click on take a copy of it and then put on the word file. <coughs> on this place. Then click on it. And then remember, if you have multiple lines, you know, find this sheet will be filled with so much of information. So we will now see our source order number, and then this is an order number actually. We can can be query on this or not. I am not very sure about it. This is order number nine seven four eight five. So click on it. The activity is now complete. Can go that. We will now go on that. Have a look at our sales orders. So we'll go click on it. It is now would have been submitted, and then would have gone to awaiting shipping also. So it would have gone to awaiting shipping also. Go there. So we will now go to what? We will now go to the sales orders. <clears throat> so go to the favorites, and then go to the manage orders. We go to the manage orders. So go to the advanced now. Fine. Go to the advanced. Whether we have a source order number field is there or not. So source order number is not there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah, yeah, second. Source order. Yes, yes, we have it. So go there. So we have a source order number. Fine. Go there. We will not query on this. So we have a source order number. So take over it. Uh, I will not paste it over here and then make a search for it. When you search for it, our order number has come. So we got our order. Nine nine seven four eight five is our order number. Fine, that has come. So there is an exception. Type fine click on it now. We'll not see what is the exception. Fine click on it. There's a warning message is coming now. Click on it. We'll not see what is the warning message. Sir, what is the difference, sir? Source order or order number? I don't know. <laughs> what is the source order number? So no matching pricing segment was found for the customer actually. Yes, yes, yes. I have not done it actually. So. Uh, I have not done it because of which what happens it has not ended up in error actually. So there is no matching prices because price list has been made only for the first customer and not for the second customer actually. So because of which what happens the pricing would have failed actually. It has not taken up what happens a ten dollar price actually because items price is okay fine. The item price is ten dollars fine. The item is having a price of one SD fine go that you want it. So but the customer is not having any matching prices fine go that you want it. You go to the actions and then go to the view pricing strategy and segment now fine go that you want it. So the pricing segment was not correct. So let us now correct it and again import it. Fine. So we'll now correct it. So I'm not given it. So let us now correct this one for that. So it's a good one. Fine. We have got an opportunity to correct also. The pricing segment has not come. So for the second customers we are not given this now fine go that. So I will now go to the home again. Click on it. Fine, that. So I will now go and then correct it actually. So we made a mistake actually. Fine. I will now correct it actually. <clears throat> go to this place. Uh, and then we will now go. Here we need to get our segments and strategy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You go to the pricing administration. Now for the customer, I have to give a what's called a this thing. Now fine. We will now create a fine. We will now go to the manage customer pricing profile. Fine. Customer pricing profile has to be given. So click on plus now fine. For the customer profile, I am not given now fine. So it's a one T one the one. I will not give a tab now. I will not choose the second customer. Second customer, I am not giving it. So I will now give the revenue potential. We have one T one. Fine. We have one thing. Fine. I am going to give it. So he falls under the category. Revenue potential. I am going to give it. So 
multi one high revenue so this has been given to customer one also and then customer two also so those are given to you give okay <clears throat> what is place click on so we are now given this one so now the customer is having this profile actually find this profile click on save and close fine the profile for the customer has been set actually fine so it is all done the remaining are all fully set actually so whenever a customer has got the revenue potential high when with the other blanks it has already been mapped a pricing segment the pricing segment has been mapped a pricing strategy so everything is now done only thing is this is the only thing which is missing on our pricing setups got it now fine so now if i import it should not give any error at all got it hello or you will yeah. so i have not given what yeah pricing profile for my customer fine click on done now fine so now when i import it i should not get this error at all i should not get this error at all so more that is not done. i don't know it is not necessary to correct it's not done so it's not done so if you go there click on it we'll now go to the order management so we are getting this error now i hope that this error will be getting avoided go to the order management and then you go to the what's called order management let me query my sales order number 974851 974851 search for it so the pricing segment was missing actions If you go to the view pricing strategy segment, the pricing segment was missing. Now, if I import it, it will not pick up because the customer is unlocked. So what I do is I will now log out and log in. Whenever you make any major changes, you have a habit of logging out and logging in. Sign out, sign out, and click on confirm. <clears throat> now signing in. Now, first of all, let me make a change to my Excel sheet. And click on sign in. So let me make a change to the Excel sheet. So go to this place. Let us now open up my sales order. The file. And then you go to the sales order import. Let us now make a change. So I will now go to the first tab region. I will now make it as what two thousand two hundred and one. So this is the two hundred and one. So these two are now. I want to the third sheet actually. Third sheet. And then I will now choose go to the second sheet also. I will now make a change to what two thousand two hundred and one. Give us save. And then I go to the first one. I will now make a change to what two hundred and one. And this also I will now make a change to two hundred and one. So this is the source order number, uh, and then order the order number. So somebody please explain us what do you mean by source sales order number and then order number? Everything has been changed. Now let us perform the import first. Clear on this now, fine. So since the customer is already having the what happened the the customer profiling for the pricing has been given now, so it should not throw any error at all. It has to pick up this. So I made a change on this now, fine. This one, and then on the second sheet also I changed it, and then the third sheet both the lines I have changed. And remember, when you have a huge number of lines, it will be a very, very difficult task. That is where my students are struggling like anything. I'll go to the space. Go there. I will now click on. I have already saved it. Remember, and then click on generate CSV file. And then here I'm going to do it now. Find that I will now say it's the import three. Import three is the one. I'm going to do it. Click on save. And then once when you have imported it, you close it without saving it now. Find close it without save. Do not save it all. Go there. We will not run this concurrent. Find that point. We will not run this concurrent. This time it should not give any error. Problem. So go to this place. Go to the tools now. Fine. This process is jujube, but getting the data, how you are going to do it? Fine. That is where Gulam is going to help us out now. Fine. Let us hope that he will help us. Fine. Go to the schedule process. That will be excellent actually. So the field you cannot do it for thousand customers by querying it actually. Fine. Getting this data. Fine. In this place. Getting this data for thousand customers, how difficult it is manually if you're doing it. It will be very very difficult actually. And the legacy system you're going to consider the process because this Excel sheet population is not a very big thing. One thing is collecting the data and then organizing it is a very difficult. Thing. So I will now say load interface file for import now. So click on. So this is again one. What the other one? The other one. So I will now say. Uh, The one, so take it away. I mean, put on the space. Now. So the first one is zero. Then the one, now, the one. So we are putting it. Now. The one, fine. Okay, fine. Okay, this will be bringing in. So this is just going to bring in in one go. Now, fine. First of all, I'll now go to the UCM area and then populate over this thing. Now, fine. Then drop it down. So once when you drop it down, it will be taking some time now. So once the time is come, I'll now go there and do it. <clears throat> Sandeep, you are in US, na? Yes, sir. God, oh, you are in East time, East Coast or West Coast? I am in East Coast. God, it is now eleven thirty in the night. Good. 
So whenever you are making a change, what you have to do is you have to log out and log in. And then so there will be five files which will be running now. Right? Once and everything is completed, we will now perform. Bring it to the base table. Soon. So all of them are coming. Everything is coming. So click on schedule. I will now bring it to the interface table, the base table. Import sales. Import sales is the one. So import sales order is the one. Right? Okay, now this time it has to be. So here I will now say this one number one, and then I will now give the source sales order number. So what is the difference between source sales order number and sales order number? all status. So click on submit. We are going to bring it in to the base table. So we are running it. Why? Oh God! It has ended up in error actually. What happened? So go back to it. You know how to look at the error. Now. So it is not even importing it. What did it say? Copy it and then go there and then open up a word file. File new and then paste it on this. So import sales order job ID is there from the number of threads spawned is okay. I mean zero import sales order did not find any matching records at all. So what is the mistake at all? So order number is what? Three one five five four five two zero one is the one. Fine. That is the sales order number for which no data is available. Sold to customer name. Sold to customer name. Everything is coming now. You're not made any modifications to any other thing, no. Import sales orders. Job ID. Log out and log in and. Uh... Click on it. I don't find any mistake at all. So we have modified everywhere. No, fine. That part is not see how the correct number. So this is okay. Close it now. So we have modified as what three one five two zero one. We will now open up the uh, this thing and then again have a look at the fine file and now look at the sales or import template. We want to place the first sheet. So it is a two zero one. It is two zero one now. Three one five four five two zero one now. Three one five four five two zero one. I might have made some mistakes. So these two things are changed. So three one five four five two zero one is the one. And then here also, what happens? We have no change. Three one five four five two zero one. Ah, I don't know. What a mistake. So let me log out and log in, and then again run this now. So so click on it. You know, log out and not find sign out and sign in. So click on confirm. Sign in. <clears throat> Go to this place. Go to the tools. So Go to the tools. And then go to the schedule the process. Not on the input sales orders. And then the input two only inside, no? It is the input two or input three? Oh God, it is input three I have to bring in now. One second, I made a mistake actually. It is a 953, fine. So import three I have to bring in, but I brought in import two. Got it now, fine? This is a mistake I made. Got it now, fine? I had to bring in import three and not import two. Actually. So 953, fine. That is a mistake. We got it. Will not bring it up. Sharing the process. You have to bring in import three and not import two. Getting it up, and so load interface file for import. So you have to bring in import three and not import two. Okay, no, no. You have to bring in import three. So the wrong file has been brought in, and so what happens is not giving because it's already imported, and so there is nothing to bring it in. That's all. Rather, it is a mismatch actually. My source is order number, and then the file are mismatching it actually. We have to bring in import three and not import two. 
so see with one uh, sales order line <laughs> we are making mistakes and then when you have huge i don't know how, how difficult it will be now i can search so is it sales uh, research so bring it in so properly the use email you know and then drop it down it is import 3 and not import 2 sandeep are you getting it yes sir this yeah. file has i have dropped this one and import 3 i have to bring it so bring it to the use email and import 3 and click on submit so five files will be running five files are running so this time i should not have the pricing problem at all so there is one expectation is one. so there is no pass there is no completed there is no success so these files so three files and everything has been in file port 3 actually click on it let us know bring it in so it's a import things and give that import sales order so import sales order we are going to click on it so click on okay and then so system Oh, they have been populate minus three. No, this has got appropriate. No, he make it as what all stages is. Fine, click on submit. Just say Muruga. <coughs> I'm submitting it. I don't want any error at all. It has to spawn the child first of all. So import sales order is ready. It has to spawn the child now. Yeah, everything is okay. Spawning the child. No, it is not passed, and then it has not spawned the child. Go there. So click on it. <sighs> it is not importing it actually. So it has not succeeded. Aiyah, yeah, we succeeded. We'll not have a look at it. Nothing to that point. We'll not have a look at it. Then open up. So click on the attachment. I'm downloading it. I'm note down the sales order number. Okay. Now open up a word file and then put down this file and then go to new. Oh, there. So nine seven four eight six is our number. Fine. Nine seven four eight six. Take out it and put on space. Close it. Is that nine seven four eight six? That is the sales order, and then this is the sole sales order. Number. So nine seven four eight six will not go on and straight away query. I should not have any problem in the pricing segment. Now, right? Come on, come on. I should not have. Go that one. Come on, go that one. I will not go to space. Right? I will not go to the favorites, and then I will not go to the manage orders. Nine seven four eight six is the number. We will not put it. Exactly. Okay. Because they are logged out on the management. Click on it. No more the manage orders. <coughs> so go there. I will not paste it over here. Nine seven four eight six. So nine seven two eight six is the number. So click on okay, fine. Come on, come on, come on. I don't want any error at all, fine. There is no error at all here. See, go there. No error. Fine, go there. Go to the actions and then go to the view pricing strategy and segment. Fine, go there. Click on it. One day, chi. We got it. Our pricing segment has come. So previously, pricing segment was not coming. Fine, go there. Click on it. And then it has now gone to the avatar shipping because we are now submitted it also. The quantity is same now. Fine, go there. Click on it. So we will now have the pricing. Everything is there. Fine, go there. Click on it. So all these things are there. Fine, go there. So everything is now coming. Then now go to the actions and then go to what switch to fulfill on view and then have a look at the do now. Fine. Since it is now submitted, fine. Click on it. Go there. Click on it. I will now click on the do number over here. So we made multiple mistakes. It is a good one that what happens, you know, corrected it. But remember, I done only for one customer, one item, and then one sales order, and then one line. Got it now. Fine. Uh, meeting shipping. Uh, what is the next step, sir? It's uh, it's automated uh, shipping. Other ship it now. Okay. Get to go to the, uh, what's called shipping, and then uh, pick it, and then ship it. So this completes a very minimal one on the sales order import actually, but the real tough task which my students are facing is what the daunting task which they have it is what on this place. When you have this data, multiple data, first of all. We have to manually collect everything, and then populate on this Excel sheet. This Excel sheet to go there. We have to populate each and everything. The, the, this is for what the third line. You go to the first line. So for each and everything, you'll be populating it. Click on it. So you will have one entry for every sales order. This is for every sales order. 
and then every sales order may even have multiple lines also fine this is a 201 if it has got multiple lines we had have multiple lines over here on the lines area and then every line will have multiple shipments also fine there again it will now be for each and every line we'll have two two entries now one for build on ship two and then if there are 10 lines there will be 20 entries only for a particular sales orders then afterwards what happens it will again repeat it will be very huge actually so doing it for a large one except especially when you want to import the legacy sales orders into the system you will now find filling up this is a very daunting task understanding it now yes, a very difficult one and then uh, if somebody can uh, what i was uh, tell us a easy way to what i must do it will now expect gulam to suggest something on the sql query first of all fine. how to make it and that will be great actually we are waiting for you or is input on is going to tell this team and then wait now fine. so apart from that fine everybody try to at least do the simple process of one sales order and then one sales order line with the two shipments and then afterwards you can even try with two fine do other things and then there are so many fields which we are not populated at all and those fields also can pop it and then can try this so your lab work has now begun you have to do a lot lot of this any other questions sandeep you are the only guy who is there now <laughs> nobody has come out now <laughs> what to do yeah really good sir uh, learn something now and here you are able to understand the magnitude of work which you have to do the client's location when you want to do a open sales order import that will be very huge actually let us hope that somebody solves our problem because my students are already suffering and then they ask me many times but i don't have any solution at all and there is one more thing i was actually one i forgot the other one more thing which i forgot to and then uh, my students ask me that instead of putting this party identifier so here we have to put more oh, than put the party identifier so good this place so here we are now putting the what's called the party side identifier this is a tough task to make a query and then do it why not we use this one now find this for this you know address line one of the customer and then we have address line one afterwards what happened the city the postal code i filled up everything and then it is failing then i asked one of my student in pwc he says that this will not work at all oracle has cleared he made a raised sr oracle has cleared all that it is not it integrated actually Fine. As of now, they are not done it. So, if you fill up the address line one instead of this uh, party, fine. This is the toughest one on this place. Fine. We have to go to the query mode and then query this two things. Fine. So, if we can bypass this by some other means, it will be great. <coughs> I tried it, not working. <coughs> He told me in PLB, see, he has already raised a SR. Oracle clearly told that it is not it done at all. By address line one, it will be easy. Fine. There is no need. Now, every customer will be having the address line one as well as city. postal code state one of them is a mandatory one but it is not picking up at all it throws the error actually so this is a tough part of the you know i hope that some other i think will be coming up so as and then i get any update i will be posting it on our telegram group now and so please watch there and then you get updated and then if you know something please educate others also that is my request to all of you now fine so help each other so that what about that we will not try to solve this cumbersome work fine right? is a very laborious cumbersome work so if anybody can sort it out it will be great actually bye for now thank you